Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Herring, a director for Critical Starts Cyber Research Unit. And today I am thrilled to introduce two of our speakers. Uh, between them, we have almost two decades worth of experience across multiple security disciplines, including security operations, incident response, vulnerability management, and cyber threat intelligence across both the public, private, and military sectors. We have David Cooter here, who is our senior cyber threat intelligence analyst. Uh, he's responsible for the collection, processing, analysis, and dissemination of our threat intelligence products. He provides a wealth of hands-on experience with structured and unstructured analytic techniques, as well as collections from various external sources, including OSINT, social, and deep web and dark web. David's credentials include the, a Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, um, and he's also a GX Certified Cyber Threat Intelligence Analyst. We also have Aaron May, who is our Senior Threat Detection Engineer, and he's responsible for ensuring that the finished intelligence provided by David um, and the rest of the CTI team result in timely and relevant detections for our customers that are built to last easy for our SOC team to triage and hard for by adversaries to bypass. Aaron provides deep technical expertise in SIM solutions, as well as a lot of hands-on experience with threat hunting. Aaron holds a Master of Science in Information Systems, as well as GX certifications in Advanced Penetration Testing and Advanced Digital Forensics. They're a representation of the deep level of talent that we have in our cyber research unit. With near, nearly a century of combined experience across a wide array of disciplines, we're constantly vigilant on the latest threats and can provide our unique insights and analysis across the threat landscape. And now, without further ado, Aaron and David, I'm going to turn it over to y'all. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. So, um, my name is Dave Cooter. I'm the Senior Cyber Threat Intelligence Analyst with Critical Start. Um, I'm going to start it off here today. Um, I just want to start off by saying that I'm extremely honored to be able to come here and do this for you guys. Um, we've been building this team for about six months now, um, developed a lot of processes. So to be able to explain that, um, how we, how we, you know, provide Intel and the latest threat detections, that's, that's just a huge honor for me. Um, so today we're going to be discussing CTI support to threat detection specifically within the critical start MDR and we can move on to the next slide. So here's today's agenda. Um, and we're gonna start out by talking about how do we provide CTI at scale? Um, the way we do that very briefly is just, we use people, process, and technology for uh, creating actionable intel to all of our customers at scale. And then we'll go on to uh, talk about how we provide different types of intelligence from indicators to your higher, higher level TTPs and behavior. And then I'll hand it off to Aaron to go over the TDE, the, the threat detection engineering process, which consists of, his team consists of two main elements. That's the research and development. They build detection definitions and then he hands stuff off to the build and test phase. And those are the folks that, um, build the actual yeah. detections for the products and uh, actually go through all the testing. So that's our agenda. Next slide. So starting off, I, I'm just gonna briefly talk about CTI, cyber threat intelligence from critical starts perspective. Um, usually everything kind of starts for developing threat detections on the latest threats. Things start within the cyber threat intelligence team. Um, we triage, investigate, and analyze uh, the latest threats that are that are in the wild and within our own MDR space, affecting our, our, affecting our customers. So we have a broad spectrum of, of customers within critical, critical start MDR. So um, it becomes extremely necessary that we develop processes um, and utilize technology that, that helps us create actionable intel at scale. At scale. So in the three main um, sectors that we do this is vulnerability intelligence, where we provide, uh, we do a look at all the different vulnerabilities that are out there. We do an assessment on the severity, and this is based off of things like, uh, you know, is this a zero day? Does it have proof of concept code? 
is there exploits in the wild and does it does it have remote code execution and a lot of this is kind of bound up in your cvss scores but we do uh initial additional threat intelligence analysis um to determine if the residual risk is higher to our customers um so then we we take those vulnerabilities and we run them through our prioritized run books um we've developed a set of run books for for uh different levels of priorities and then we use for our technology we use a strategic intel software that provides a single pane of glass that shows us the latest um threats that are out there affecting uh are utilizing and exploiting the different vulnerabilities then um the we move on to the next sector of what we provide in the cti team and that's the latest threat intelligence and so what we do on a regular basis is we scour you know hundreds of different collection sources these are paid sources uh, from your isacs to um, government sources like the fbi and cisa uh, to your normal open source uh, uh, curated intelligence products out there in, in the community um, what we're doing is we're looking for the latest malware ttps um, to to kind of break down and provide that to threat detection engineering we also gather all the iocs and the indicators of attack that we can glean from from those threats and then we have a threat intelligence platform a tip that we use to integrate um, a lot of different threat intel feeds into one plane of glass so that we can enrich those um, those latest threats that we find and then lastly, we, let, we like to stay a little proactive and provide imminent threat and sentiment analysis. And the way we do that is by um, going out there and um, utilizing social media, utilizing OSINT sources to derive kind of a sentiment, to look at the chatter of what, what, um, what folks might be saying in regards to our customers, in regards to Critical Start. Um, and then we also do deep dark web monitoring so we monitor different marketplaces forums um, blog sites all those different things to to kind of to kind of see what the threat actors are planning in the future and then we also use for technology in the in this um, imminent threat area we use dark, uh, deep dark web monitoring tools um so yeah that we uh then we package all this up and we we kind of provide that to our internal and external customers so internal customers that could be the SOC, that could be incident response uh that can be any number of groups but today we're going to focus on cyber threat intelligence providing threat intel to threat detection engineering so next slide we'll take a look at what that looks like so um, CT, the CTI team, Cyber Threat Intelligence and Threat Detection Engineering are actually on the same team within Critical Start, and that team's called the Cyber Research Unit or the crew. Um, so we, we do support internal and external customers. We support IR for threat hunting and, and threat assessments, um, but primarily we're here to uh, produce detections based on the latest threats. So here's kind of a flow diagram from left to right on how our daily process plays out. So you, you can see the cyber threat intelligence team here on the left hand side. What we do is we take the highest priority threats for the day, whatever that might be, um, something we've identified from an external um, source or something we've identified from inside of our inside of our environment. And we run that through our all source intelligence team and our malware analysis reverse engineering team. So I'm part of the all source team. We triage and prioritize. And then if we need additional information, we uh, provide a sample to our malware, our malware analysts, and they can provide additional technical details to um, to strengthen the detections of what we're of what we're trying to detect on. Once we have that, once we have that body of information and that report, we then send that on to threat detection engineering. They, uh, of course, like I said, initially, they're, they're composed of research and design and build and test. Everything starts in TDE and the research and design. What they do there, and Aaron will expound on this 
a, a lot more later in this presentation, what they do during research and design is they go into another level of, of research, essentially. After they get our product, they go into their own research and they end up creating uh, threat definitions and pseudocode that they can then send on to the build and test team. The build and test team then goes to um, actually build out detections for each one of the nine uh, security products that you see off to the right hand side there. Uh, before anything gets deployed, they of course have to test. So the build and test team also tests those before they're actually sent out into live production. Next slide. So before we get into the details of our, what our actual analysis looks like, what our actual product to TDE looks like, um, I, I always think it's it's probably best to start with David Bianco's Pyramid of Pain. Um, any, any good uh, talk I've ever seen uh, talks about this and we think about this on a daily basis. So those of you that are out there, you're probably familiar with the Pyramid of Pain um, by now, but if you're not, um, this is kind of the thought process that we take. We provide um, everything from your lowest trivial IOCs, hash values, IP addresses, domain names. Um, we package that up from the malware that we're analyzing, from the threats that we're analyzing. Um, we provide that, and then we, but we also provide uh, the network and host artifacts. So we go through and we um, take a look at what type of uh, commands are, are being utilized, um, different things like that. And then we, we also combine the tools that the malware or the threat actors are using, and we provide all that stuff in our product to TDE. But all these, all these lower level things, of course, are not the greatest, the greatest types of information to be creating detections from. So ultimately, um, you know, hash values, those can be changed immediately they can be changed in in a matter of seconds with each with each uh, breach they can be changed ip addresses same thing can be changed almost immediately so creating detections based off of this is not our ultimate goal what we want to get to is providing behavioral ttps and if you want to click so when we talk about behavioral TTPs, really what we're talking about is mapping those behaviors that we see in the malware um, that, that we're analyzing and mapping those to MITRE TTPs. So this is a screenshot that I took from MITRE uh, Attack Navigator. And I just kind of mapped TTPs across each, each stage of the MITRE Attack framework. So um, each, each phase here up at the top, you can see that um, each phase is a, is a tactic. It's what the threat actor hopes to achieve throughout that, uh, throughout that attack or throughout that breach. So we go through initial access, execution, persistence, privilege, escalation, and we map the malware to each one of these um, tactics. And then below you can see techniques. Each one of these techniques um, has a sub technique tied to it, and then we can tie each one of those techniques to a different portion of that malware. And so this is the ultimate goal is to get to this level, producing detections that are based off of behavioral TTPs. Slide. So once we have all this information gathered, we have our IOCs, we have our behavioral TTPs, we wrap all that up into a JIRA, essentially a JIRA ticket. Um, and in that JIRA ticket, we can follow the detection creation from the CTI, uh, Cyber Threat Intelligence Analysis, all the way through to the various threat detections that are created for both the SIMs and the EDRs. So in, in a JIRA ticket, um, here's an example of QBOT. We recently did um, an analysis of QBOT and developed some detections for it. It created a really good um, op open source example for creating detections. Um, so here's what we were able to provide for QBOT. So we provi provide a brief description of what the malware actually is or what the actors are actually doing. We talk about the threat actors that use that malware. 
we describe the industry, we talk about the target technology, what is this malware specifically targeting? Is it Microsoft's endpoints or, or other types of technology? What types of services is it, is it targeting? And then what type of tools do they provide? And then down at the bottom, you can see we provide a link to all the IOCs that we pulled out of that malware. Um, what we also provide, as you can see, is kind of a blown up um, screenshot here of an Excel spreadsheet. We essentially provide an entire spreadsheet breakdown of the malware. So on the left hand side, you can see the procedure. Um, so each portion of the malware uh, that we break out is linked to a specific procedure and we provide the technical artifacts specific to that malware for each procedure. And then we map that procedure to a MITRE uh, technique. So we give the description of the MITRE technique, the tactic, the technique in the MITRE TID. And for each technique, we also provide mitigations and detections provided by MITRE attack. Um, we also provide a link for each technique from MITRE Defend. And what that does is gives us all of the technical artifacts that are associated with that type of, with that type of technique. Then we kind of scour the the open source environment looking for any sigma and yara rules that, been, that have been written out there uh, specific to this malware. So that includes uh, you know, GitHub repositories and MITRE uh, common analytics repositories. We scour all of that, add that into the spreadsheet, and um, you know, it just provides this kind of checklist for, for our threat detection engineers. Once we have all those procedures in that spreadsheet, we map it to uh, chronologically through the kill chain. So step by step by step, um, we lay it out. Once we have it laid out nicely like that, then we can go back in and we can pull out behavior that can that um, detections can be written on. So here you can see we pulled out um, a scheduled task spawning a PowerShell script. And so we noticed immediately this was going to be two types of behavior that we're going to that were going to be important for the later stages of detection writing. And so you can see also um, below those below those two TIDs, below the PowerShell and scheduled tasks, there's also technical um, artifacts that we put in there, like command lines and what, what the actual PowerShell script was. And so once we have all this, we package it up in that ticket and we send it on to threat detection engineering. And now I'll pass it off to Aaron for um, for him to talk about his piece of this. Go ahead. All right, yeah. Thanks, David, appreciate it. Um, so, yep, I'm uh, part of the threat detection engineering team and uh, picking up where David left off, we'll talk about um, a little bit more about what the, that structure of the team looks like. Um, so in terms of our team processing that threat intelligence and that, that information they provide, um, we, have, we have two different groups. So we have our research and design group and we also have our build and test group. And so we'll just talk briefly about some of the kind of the highlights of, um, of the different tasks that our team performs in taking in that information. So, so the first thing here for research and design is that we, uh, we essentially uh, be, uh, analyze that, that, threat, that threat intel report um, and are looking at the, the various um, components in it, such as um, uh, references to the TTPs, Sigma rules, uh, references to research papers. Um, and with that information, uh, we do some of our own threat research. So we, we dive in deeper where we need to. Um, and so that's part of it. Uh, the other thing is, is, is looking at coverage analysis. Do we already have existing detections? Um, are, are there protections out there that are open source that we can leverage? And, and with that, we're able to um, prioritize our development. And, and that's really an important piece of what uh, the CTI team provides is the ability for us to quickly process information about a threat and, and then be able to uh, prioritize the development of the detections. So with that information, we begin the, the detection design uh, phase. Um, and then also just lastly, data source availability. As anyone working in STEM knows, it's, there's always a question, is that data available? So that's another a big piece of, of what we look at. And uh, so for the build and test team, 
um, one of the primary things is, is building the detection. So they take the, the prototype detection or we also call it detection definition um, from research and design and they start to build out detection. And, and secondly, we see here, there's also the translation piece. So uh, a detection may be in a Sigma format or the prototype detection may have been written in say Splunk or Devo. And it's um, the task of the build and test team to take that, that query logic and then translate that into the various um, EDR, XDR uh, systems and other SIM platforms. Uh, also is the, there's the testing and validation piece. So you can see down here below, uh, a big part of that is attack simulation. So uh, running various simulations to confirm that the detection does what, what we want it to do. Uh, and then the other thing is query performance. You know, is the uh, detection written efficiently? Uh, is it gonna be able to scale long-term? So that's always an important consideration. And then the other thing for build and test is the, um, engagement with the SOC. So anytime you're developing a new detection, it's uh, it's really important that uh, that you're engaged well with the threat analysts or the SOC analysts that are going to be triaging that alert. So before uh, detections are deployed into production, uh, we go through a, a review with the SOC and and just confirm that the, it looks like a high value detection. They're going to be able to re to take action on it. Um, so that's kind of a, that's it for a high level, how the team is broken up. I'll move on to the next slide here. So on this slide, um, just a quick visualization of like a very high level of, of that process of taking in the CTI uh, and then getting that into various products um, to provide the best possible production customers. So uh, David touched on earlier, um, we can see here, uh, down here in the bottom left corner, um, in, this, in this, the rest of the presentation, we're gonna focus specifically on these two uh, techniques and talk about how we go from this information all the way to detections that are in the consoles. So uh, we can see here, uh, kind of, we have this uh, little horizontal funnel um, and we can see some of the key components of that CTI threat analysis report. Again, a big piece of what we get from CTI is the prioritization, is understanding uh, what type of impact this particular threat is gonna have on our customers and what is that urgency level to get detections out in order to, to make sure they're protected. Um, the other thing would be uh, data sources that are um, related to uh, that particular threat, uh, available signal rules, if there are any, uh, references to technical research papers, and then also uh, references to um, several di different uh, MITRE resources, defend, attack, uh, and then of course the, the threat summary. And so this next step here uh, is, a, is basically just a, a recap of what we discussed in the previous slide, uh, just highlights some of those key uh, responsibilities of research and design. And then we move over here to build and test. Uh, again, they're building detection, simulating attacks, um, and then there, there's a lot of triage considerations and working with the stock. And then lastly, the uh, the various products. And I, and I don't think this is all the products, uh, but uh, but we have some listed here. So in this slide, I just want to take a moment to uh, to look at some visualizations of of what the data that CTI provides us, like what that looks like and, and how we're able to apply that. So in this uh, top left corner here, we see uh, we're essentially using, uh, you can use Jupyter Notebooks or Google Collab, um, data those are data analytics applications. And in this slide, we are, uh, we've imported the, the, t the techniques uh, from the CTI report and, and also, in that report, they list the data components. So just a quick visualization of seeing, okay, here's all the techniques that are in scope for this particular threat. And then for each of those techniques, we can see uh, those associated data components. And so uh, just kind of gives us an idea of where we need to focus some of that research and, and, um, and what that's gonna look like. And if we move over here to the right, 
Uh, another a great tool uh, that we use is the OSUM data sets. And what that allows us to do is take the, uh, the data from CTI again, import that into a notebook, and then we're able to correlate that with the OSUM data. And we can see specific relationships that we would want to focus our research efforts on. So uh, of course, at the top, uh, it's, it's always a high one is the process executed command. We have also process created process. And, um, and so we can see, you know, these are the type of actions that uh, we need to focus on from um, uh, a research and an engineering perspective. And then also we can see over here, the various log sources that were, were tied to that. Um, and then this third uh, slide here, um, using again, Jupyter uh, widgets, uh, we can pick those, pick out that relationship or that action and, and actually show us exactly which event IDs we would use across various different log providers. So just wanted to take a moment to kind of show the value of what CTI is providing in some visualizations uh, that really does help in the uh, in prioritizing uh, our research and our development efforts. Let's take a break and drink some water here. <laughs> Okay, so in this next slide, we're going to talk about how we go from the, the TTPs that CTI provides and, and get to a place where we have a detection definition or detection prototype. And so, as we mentioned previously, we're focusing on these two particular techniques here. Um, this happens to be, this is a persistence mechanism that was used by QBot. And, and so we're gonna show how we get to that definition stage. So we start there in, in number one, um, talked about. Um, so here in the second uh, little panel, uh, this is a research article that was also provided by the CTI team. And in that, in that article, we're able to gather those technical details. And if we go down to the panel number three here, uh, we, can, we can see that specific uh, persistence mechanism. We can see the command that was executed here, uh, which is also was provided initially in, in that panel number one. Um, we're just highlighting that there again. So in this particular case, um, you know, we were fortunate enough that there was a Sigma rule already available and CTI had provided that Sigma rule in the report. So, uh, so in some cases, uh, threat detection engineering, um, if there's not a Sigma rule, then we'll go through, we'll review the TTP based off of the CTI report. Um, we'll also look at those technical research articles and we'll pull out exactly what that detection needs to be built on. Um, but in this case, we have a, a signal role. So, uh, so we're highlighting that here. <clears throat> and uh, in, this, in this next panel, uh, this is what our, our definition structure looks like. And it's off of the, um, the ADS framework or the alerting detection strategies framework. Um, it's a pretty uh, well-known framework. Lots of companies use it. And what it does is it provides um, a, a structure around how to document and uh, including the, the right information um, so that you're consistent with development efforts. So we'll just touch on a few of these things here. So we got the, you know, the name, we got the goals of detection, categorization, what specific MITRE techniques, um, abstract, like what are the requirements, what type of events do we need to collect? In this case, we're looking at Windows and 4688. Um, the technical context, again, we seek the effort, provided this information, we got some links to the, the research articles. And then here, um, in this case, again, we have a signal rule, so we have that link there. Um, and just I'll touch briefly, so blind spots, that's always a consideration is, um, you know, are we collecting the right events? And, and in this case, um, uh, they, they need be, we need to be collecting Windows 468 events, but also have command line arguments enabled. So things like that, that you want to note that in the definition. And then false positives is always important, um, especially when working um, with the SOC and, um, and providing high value detections for them with things that they can triage. Um, so that, that's important to note. Um, and then higher false positive rates uh, may lead to the detection being a threat on t um, but that's, that's a topic. 
Um, and then here in validation, this is where we'll put a couple kind of quick prototype uh, queries that, uh, that we'll pass along to the builder test team. So here we just have an example of a Splunk query and, and one for, uh, for Azure Sentinel. All right, so now that we, we have our definition, uh, we'll talk a little bit now about what that content development workflow looks like or, or content development pipeline. So, uh, you know, as we mentioned, uh, we start here with the, the CTI report. Uh, that's, that gets assigned to threat detection engineering uh, via, via a task. Uh, the threat researchers or the research and design group is going to perform that analysis of the report, design the prototype detection, and then that then gets passed down to build and test where they do the building, the translation, and the testing of that detection. And then it follows on with the, the stock evaluation <clears throat> and then moves on to the, the distribution of the detections to the various uh, SIM platforms and endpoint uh, security solutions. Um, and then moves into a, uh, a monitor a quality check state. And I'll just point out here, the, the red dash lines is, is back loop. So at any stage, if, if build and test reaches a point where they just don't think it's a viable detection, uh, they can then pass that back to research and design um, for, for modifications. The same thing back down here with the stock evaluation. If there's, uh, if it needs to be refined further, that gets moved back uh, into the detection build phase uh, for modification. And then, and then as always, uh, even after it's been deployed and the detection's in production, uh, there's always feedback from the stock, customers, uh, and, and various other groups. I just want to highlight that there. All right, so in this slide, uh, uh, we're just illustrating the uh, the network effects of the value that the CTI brings uh, in, their, in the data they provide. So we can see here on the left, we've got the CTI report and we would develop this definition. And so we've got one detection definition, which gets translated into nine different detections for these various platforms. And then that gets distributed broadly uh, to our customers and to ensure that they have the protection that they need. And then, yeah, here on the right, uh, just various examples. So we've got a, a swamp query that can be, that can be deployed. Uh, we've got something for Azure Sentinel, Microsoft Defender, and, and Cortex SDR. Uh, so we've highlighted a, a few here, but there would be a specific detection for, for each of those platforms. All right, and I will pass it off to you, David, to uh, wrap it up. Thanks, Aaron. Good job, man. Um, so the, the overall goal here is to um, kind of get as, as broad of a coverage as we can of the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So here's a here's the next um, kind of a heat map that we did. Actually, Aaron created this, a heat map of our detections as they map to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Um, the blue the blue boxes here, those are TTPs that we know we've created more than one detection for. The green are TTPs that we've created at least one detection for. And then the yellow are kind of that backdrop for uh, detections that we have either not developed a detection for in the, in the crew, um, but are assessed to have some sort of coverage out of the box from, from the products that are, that are in our customer environments. So the goal is to cover down on those TTPs that we view as the uh, biggest priorities for us. That's what we've been focused on in these first six months that we've worked together. Um, we're of course riding off of the coattails of folks that came before us, um, but the crew is essentially trying to capitalize on those most critical priorities and TTPs. So that's that's what we're looking for in the malware in a lot of cases that we're, um, that we're looking at or a lot of the threats that we're looking at. We're looking for those TTPs that we deem are the highest priorities and then um, triaging the rest of the MITRE ATT&CK framework, uh, the rest of these TTPs and behaviors as we can get to them. Um, 
that that's the end goal. This is how we kind of gauge what our, our success is. And this is kind of what we're working toward. This is exactly what we're working towards is that full coverage. So um, thank you for giving us the chance to come here and talk about you know our entire process from CTI triage all the way to TDE kicking out a massive amount of threat detections in our customer environments on a regular basis. Um, this, this does happen daily. This is a process that we're engaged in on a daily basis. As we said before, we support many customers and this is how we use people process and technology to, to make that happen on a large scale. So thanks again for, for letting us be here and, and talking about our process.